Right, so good morning. My name is Ian Brocklebank, and I'm going to talk you through my PhD research, which is investigating the design process of rural UK district heating networks. I think this is an important area to focus on because there isn't much in the way of rural district heating when compared to urban, and this is mainly due to the vastly increased costs of installing it and operating it. In particular, I think it'd be very useful if there was a quick model or equation that could be used to estimate the economic feasibility of a new network so you can see whether it's worth going into it before you spent too much time or money looking into it. Okay, so firstly, I apologise to everyone who will know this already, but what is district heating? It is a way of providing the thermal energy needed for a customer's um, space heating, hot water and cooling needs from a centralised heat source or heat sources. I think it's a very useful technology to look into, mainly because it is good at using renewable and waste energy sources such as commodity to power, waste energy from industry and waste incineration. This means that it's low cost and helps tackle energy poverty. It is um, environmentally friendly and helps improve local air quality. It helps with our national energy security and it's good at bringing local money into the local economy. Um, currently in the UK, district heating is not widely done and it provides maybe 2% of our total energy needs for heating purposes. The problems it faces are mainly, I feel, due to local authorities not having the expertise or experience to install their own networks and the electricity market making it very hard for small generators such as CHP networks to sell directly on the market. In Europe, this is more common, particularly in the Scandinavian and Baltic countries, and in these countries it may be up to 60 to 70% of the total energy needed for heating purposes. But even in some of these countries where um, urban district heating is reaching market saturation, rural district heating is not widely done. Okay, so as I said, I would like to make a model that could be used to assess the economic feasibility. I'd like this to be quite simple and have as inputs the inputs would include the um, customer base, the heat supply, and particularly the local weather. I am going to use, to, as a case study for this model, um, H.J. Enthoven, who are Ledass's battery uh, recycling site in Matlock and the local area. I'm going to split my work into five main areas. Firstly, I'm going to do energy mapping, an example which from a um, Sheffield researcher is shown there. This could be used to give an idea of the local energy demand and give a suggested route for the network. I'm then going to run an energy balance on the HA and home site to work out how much um, energy um, supply there is. I'm going to do more detailed modelling of the demand once I've worked out which customers to connect, um, particularly for long term and short term and how it affects, is affected by user behaviour and the weather. I'm then going to use thermal energy storage to balance the supply and demand. And then finally, I'm going to use the build an economic model. This is the key stage to work out the economic feasibility and should hopefully give a suggestion of any extra investment that's needed, the sale price of the heat suggested and the payback period. And this is key from the research I found, it suggests that most industries are not um, keen on technology that takes more than three or four years to pay back. Uh, luckily that was the end, so thank you very much for your time. <laughs>